from the top of Superga one day before the start of the Giro. Welcome, Welcome to the GCN Show! Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, is pro racing better than ever or more boring than ever? We are discussing whether the rise of the super elite is crushing the sport. Plus, that is impressive actually, was he wearing socks? That you can now buy an official Bob Marley bike. I am not a fan of the dark horse. Have shown style has gone out of the window. I don't know, it's just a bit like, it's wood, bikes should be like metal. Because it promises to make any shoe a clipless <laughs> compatible shoe. This week in the world of cycling and reggae, we learnt that you can now buy an official Bob Marley bike thanks to a collaboration between the Marley family and State Bicycle Company. Yeah, this orange, yellow and green clunker, complete with a frame bag made of hemp, is now top of my Christmas list. Well, it's only 232 days to wait, James. Yeah. Uh, now, as for how long we've got to wait for this next bit of loveliness, who knows? SRAM Pro teams are out in force on what looks to be a new group set. No pun intended. No. Uh, now, Alex saw it at the Giro, but was sworn to secrecy by some fairly burly mechanics. However, there were no such issues for the GCN <laughs> website team the very next day who took some lovely spy shots. Yeah, can't wait to see and hear more about it. We also learned this week that downhill mountain bikers, just like their road riding cousins, have shown style has gone out of the window in the pursuit of, guess what? Speed. That's right, not by wearing the Giro Spaceballs helmets, no, which no, no. would have actually been blooming funny. Yeah. But and gone viral. Yeah, they don't have a sense of humour, those guys. Uh, <laughs> but they have gone instead for full Lycra speed suits, courtesy of Fox Clothing. There wasn't a clean sweep of victories at the World Cup at the weekend, though. The best-placed aero rider was Nina Hoffman in second, with Tiny Seagrave in third. Yeah, I actually think it looks way mm, cooler than those kind of baggy pajamas mm. that they used to race in, which made them all look like a bunch of 11 year olds yeah, who've been rummaging around in their mum and dad's wardrobe. <laughs> we, nah. we all know, don't we? We do all know, about, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sticking with cool though, we also learned that this week that Tade Pogaccia, already in the pink leader's jersey at the Giro d'Italia, came prepared with these very trendy wine coloured shorts to go with them. Yes, very trendy, as we will see. Now, for many people, this might be the most exciting thing about this year's Giro. Such is the lack of anticipation around the racing action, yeah. because Tadej Pogaccia is so good, mm. isn't he? So yeah. some people are basically writing the race off as a foregone conclusion. Now, anyone who has watched the first few stages will know that has actually been really exciting, although Pogaccia making headlines for not winning stage one doesn't do anything to dispel these lingering fears. No, that is true, isn't it? Mm. And to be honest with you, I think we need to talk about yeah. this, okay? So in the men's peloton, as we know, there has been this rise of the super elites. Yeah. So the riders who are rewriting the playbook of racing as well as the history book. Think Van der Poel's crushing solo wins at the Cobble Classics and Pogacar's crushing wins at Strada Bianchi and Liège. And while the women's peloton doesn't have a standout Galactica right now, we did until last season with Annemiek van Vluten, who won six Grand Tours in a row, or Mariana Vos, who has won basically everything else for decades. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, almost literally, hasn't she? And yeah. she still hasn't stopped winning either. No. She mopped up two at the uh, Tour of Spain last week. Anyway. I think there's two ways of looking at this, right? Firstly, you can look at each race in isolation as a spectator event. And so, yes, you could say that an 80 kilometer solo break is not the most exciting no. watch on TV. It makes for brilliant reading, pretty good highlights, mm. but decidedly average TV viewing. Yeah, the reality is that there are lots of different ways of being a racing fan. And watching hours of live TV is only one of them. I do wonder if the most outspoken people on this subject are the ones glued to their TV. Yeah, the same ones that moan about Milan San Remo as being boring, yeah. when actually they just don't understand that it's not supposed to be watched. All of it. All of it. From gun to tape. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with you though. I genuinely think that perhaps if you are glued to TV for mm. five hours, like you might end up getting a bit moany. 100%. But let's face it, right? Other sports have good races and bad races, yeah. don't they? Or exciting matches and boring matches. Yeah. 
So are we saying that some bike races are less exciting to watch because of these Galacticos? I think one compounding factor is that we don't see the Galacticos racing against each other often enough. This season has been unfortunate as so many riders are out with injury, but when we have all riders on form at something like the Tour de France, we get amazing racing. Yeah, let's not forget, we are talking Pogacar up as a possible successor to the yeah. greatest of all time, Eddie Merckx, and accusing him of potentially crushing racing, mm. but he hasn't actually won the last two Tours de France, has he? Mm, well, I guess. I think we still want the best riders to race each other more frequently, though, don't we? We do. We absolutely yeah. do, which is precisely why someone like Pogacar is so exciting because he races and races to win in loads of different events. Now my two cents, firstly as someone who's got a long history as a cycling fan, and yeah. secondly as someone who doesn't get to watch hours and hours <laughs> of live racing either because of you know home or work or whatever, yeah. is that this is, like this current time now is a golden age for cycling. 100%, it's amazing. You just might not be able to see it if you're really close up. Yeah, you're also a bit of a glory boy, aren't you, mate? I am 100% mm. a glory boy. There is nothing I hate more in bike racing. And I know I'm gonna come up, get a bit of flack for this, but I hate it when the early break holds on and we get a surprise winner. Yeah. Like, I feel cheated. I love seeing the big guns racing flat out and winning by just crushing the opposition. So you're not a fan of the dark horse? I am not a fan of the dark horse. Do you know what? I actually agree with you on that one. It is a golden age. History is being rewritten, which is an amazing thing to be able to witness. But I do sympathize with the people who want to watch an action-packed couple of hours of racing, but not end up with a procession, you know? I do, yeah. And so do I, right? And I'm, um, you know, as the biggest Matthew van der Poel fan on the planet, even I walked mm. away from Paris Bay to go make a cup of tea. Because yeah. I was like, you know, I, f I feel like I've witnessed enough yeah. amazingness for you one You know minute. what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah, go exactly. get a cup of tea. But that doesn't mean that it's still not an amazing thing. No. Do you know what I mean? Ah, it's difficult, isn't it? I think it, it might help to try and step back a little bit and see the bigger picture here. So we agree, not every race is an absolute banger, but... Some of the best racing ever witnessed has been over the last few seasons. So let's not moan too much, shall mm. we? Because it is flipping amazing. No, I, I mean, I agree. So are the super elites, the creme de la creme, the top bananas ruining racing? No, they are not. No, but what do you lot think though, okay? Mm. Get involved in the comment section down below. We will be really, really interested to read them. Is racing better than ever? or more boring than ever. Maybe it's boring because Daniel Lloyd's been doing commentary. I mean, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> no, I love it when Lloydie gets on the mic. <laughs> Honestly, it's just like, ah, oh, it's just like. Wow, well, you're just used to hearing his voice, aren't you? Yeah, but it's such a nice voice, isn't it? I love it. Cute. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're gonna start with news of the trendiest event in cycling, the Tracker in Girona. Yeah, it's part of the Gravel Earth series. And this year has attracted some of the biggest names from Europe, Africa, and even shock horror, the US. That's right, Americans riding gravel outside of America. Yeah. It can happen, it can. and in fact, Peter Stettiner only went and won the men's 360 kilometer race. Carolina Migon won the women's. The 200K race, though, was arguably where the biggest hitters could be found. Uh, Peter Vakoch won the yep. men's, and Carolyn Schiff took the women's. Yeah, three hot takes, Si. Firstly, One. Canyon are going in big with gravel. Three of the four winners were riding Canyon Grails. They were, yeah, good point. Two, triathlon legend Alistair Brownie finished a very impressive 21st in the men's race. That is impressive, actually. Was he wearing socks? Uh, yeah, he was, I think, wearing socks. Yeah. Wowzers, okay. Yeah. yeah. Three, I've never seen so many coloured pairs of cycling shorts. Gravel has a vibe, and it isn't, you guessed it, like Lycra. No. Well, there you go. Hank's hot takes there. I think you could have had four, actually. I think Alistair Brownlee wearing socks. Was, was a bit of a hot take. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Not wrong. So, Pogaccio is basically what we're saying. Pogaccio is channeling gravel vibes at the Giro. And I yeah. like it. I like it. <laughs> I'm yeah. It. Okay, yeah. right. Well, you keep us posted next week on I will. Hank's hot takes. I'm looking forward to that. I'm um, sticking with racing for one final moment. I know there's been a lot so far, but hats off to Demi Vollering for winning the Tour of Spain, the first women's Grand Tour of the year. She also 
very kind of her actually, he took the time to give us another tantalising glimpse of the new SRAM as she showed her bike off to the cameras as she crossed the line there. So, uh, so thanks Demi for that one. It's not even out yet and it's chalked up a Grand Tour win. Mm. Right, next up, something that caught my eye on the Momentum Mag. A new bike path is being proposed in Italy, which it's kind of basically like something off Swift. It's it, wild. Yeah, it is, yeah. So it's elevated at treetop height and it seems to be glowing red, like something out of, um, you know, Zwift's Neokio world, like that kind of futuristic God. Japanese style. But I mean, it literally does, isn't it? I mean, how cool would that be? It would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, a bit of a novelty. <laughs> uh, right, now some tech which jumped out at me last week because it promises to make any shoe a clipless <laughs> compatible shoe. Now, my mind was racing yeah. when I heard about this until I saw the clip clap. The clip clap. The clip clap, yes. So it basically, I mean, it's clever, right? It's, a, it's like a cleat for your clipless mm. pedal with a small platform mm. attached to it that then straps to your shoe. So it does deliver on its promise, technically, by making your shoe compatible with a clipless pedal. Equally, you could say that it turns your clipless pedals into toe clips. Toe clips yeah. Maybe a good thing to have tucked away for emergency side, just in, for ca in case, like we all do, forget our shoes. Yeah, yeah? well that's it, maybe events yeah. should have some tucked away to give out to poor people who've driven 200 kilometers and then have to ride I mean, like the an worst epic thing. sportif on a pair of trainers. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe the events so, should be like, well here you go, have a clip clap. Wow. Anyway, I noticed that over the last few weeks you've been talking a lot about the new breed of all-road bikes, of which 43 have just been released. And now there's another, the Ridley Griffin. That's right. Mm. Griffin uh, missing a few vowels, I should say. Mm. Um, I saw this on the GCN website as well, actually, and I think it looks really good. Basically, I think they're taking road bike vibes, but increasing the tyre clearance up to 42 mil. Although, as in previous weeks, James, I think this new breed of all-road bikes is absolutely a mega. I'm 100% behind it, but it is literally rebranding gravel bikes from five years ago. It's evolution, Sai. Now get with the times. Well, I am with the times. I'm so with the times, right, <laughs> that the new Colnago gravel bike that was released last week as yeah. well, the G4X, like I'm that far ahead of the times that I've already raced one before it's been released. Basically like a less successful version of Demi Vol. Yeah, I was going to say I did not win that. a grand tour on it, but anyway, you'll have to wait a couple of weeks for the video. Um, yeah. But the bike is mint. It's like the gravel version of Pogaccia's V4 RS. So super dialed, nothing bonkers on it, and it looked mega. The question is though, was it as fast as Tade's bike? Yes, yes it was, 100%. It was as fast as Tade's bike. Now last thing on Cycling Shorts is checking out with Wout Van Artwatch. Yeah. All right, because he's back up to four and a half hour rides at 34k an hour. That is insane, Unreal. isn't it? You cannot keep a good man down, that's what they say. But that is actually like, I mean, it's quite sobering, isn't it? It's, he's just a Galactico. He is a Galactico. Yeah, Do cannot I mean? wait to see him back in action, keeping um, Van der Poel and Pogaccia on their toes. Yeah, I just can't wait to see those guys hit at it. Tour of Norway, he's going to be back in action, apparently. I was reading this morning. Oh, yeah. So probably not many Galacticos there, but, you know, it'd be nice to see him pin a number on, wouldn't it? Uh, right, um, before we leave, we said that was the last thing. Actually, can you just admire <coughs> our T-shirts for a minute? And uh, I've got no... I've got a little sweat patch. Mate, pink T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad you're wearing it, not me. But yeah, but check yes, it out. So these are is. our Italian-themed T-shirts. Uh, there's sweatshirts as well. Um, so check out the GCN shop. There's loads on there. Some amazing designs yeah. and stuff. So yeah, there you go. We've Zon gone Colan. all out, haven't we, in pink? Yeah. I tell you what, I get like shivers looking at that. Not because it's a pink T-shirt, but the Zonkalan. I had to ride up it a gazillion times So last I've year. never done the Zonkalan. Have you not? No. I'm not sure it'll be your cup of tea, mate. No. It's like, it's fairly relentless. Yeah. Um, it's not like it's punchy, but for nine kilometers. Yeah, not for me. But um, I might try it one day. It's one of those climbs you just have to do before you die. You do, 100%. Sorry. I'll I, do it one day. You'll do it one day. Three three times. Three times on probably a hundred pound bike. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Anyway, check out shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. By the way, actually, you know that pink um, jersey that you were modeling, the yes. uh, limited collection? Yeah. Uh, I think we might be almost sold out. out. Or do you think we're totally out? I think so, but go check out on the website to double check because... You I guys, you got to get in quick. Yeah. you got to get in quick. Anyway, there will be um, limited 
jersey number three coming at some point soon. So mm. hopefully you'll no, be I getting a bit your money. Quicker. Yeah, we're not going to sell out that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they said I, I could model it, but I, they didn't want to intimidate people. No, which is kind of fair enough. So, you know, yeah. yeah. It's now time for hack forward slash bodge of the week. The bit of the show where you send in your hacks or bodges and we get to rate them well, or talk about them. Yeah, but whether it's a hack or a bodge basically, don't we? And yeah, you don't send them in now because you got we got the uploader back! Yeah, and we go. don't have to, you know, rugby tackle the big man. You're talking about Killian. Killian. Yeah, that was... Um, yeah, I mean, it, at least he, he we listened, did scare him a little bit. You did, right. Okay, um, first up this week, we've got this sent in by Purple Feathers. Um, so it is a helmet with their contact details written on. We should probably blur that out, actually, mm. so that not everyone's going to be bombarding their nearest and dearest with text messages. Um, but anyway, they're saying, commuting to work, I don't take any uh, tracking tech. Uh, and on busy days, my phone might die before I'm home. So it struck me that the low-tech option, in case of emergencies, uh, was to write phone numbers on my helmet, which which is sensible. It does work, doesn't it? But it's also, like, it's quite a sort of, like, macabre thing. Every time you put your helmet on, instead of being like, oh, I feel good today, mm. I look cool, you know, it's like, oh... You're reminded of emergency. I might have a heart attack, yeah. or I might get smushed, or, uh, you know... So I don't know, like, it's cool. Well, I wouldn't say it's cool. Well, I know, I it's, say it's a good fun- idea. Yeah, it's functional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just don't want it. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd almost like, say it's functional, not cool. Yeah. You know. What are you going to say there? Hack or bodge? I well, feel like I feel like it's neither. It's neither. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's more bodge than a hack. Really? Yeah. Because it, it's so depressing. Well, you, I mean, you're just writing. Yeah, your number on your helmet. <laughs> oh, well, I, not I, your number. The Did emergency it? contact number. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, well, maybe you guys let us know what you think. Is it is it a, is it a hack? Is it a good thing, or is it a little bit like ah, oh, not sure we need that? Mm. I don't. I genuinely don't know. I'm no, on the fence. I don't know God, let, that doesn't happen often, does it? Let us know in the comment section below. Yeah. Next up, we've got a bike stand gym. One less frame in the garage. Bolt wall mount bike rack to gym. Undo and rotate when not in use. So this is basically um, a squat rack that. I'm glad you said that. I was like, that's some kind of gym apparatus, and I don't know what it is. But (laughs) it's a squat rack, of course it is. Yeah, that's doubled up on one of the uh, one of the pillars to be a um, bike stand, so you can sort your bike. A work stand. Work stand. Yeah. You know what? I think that's I think that's great. Like, obviously, uh, I've got a squat rack at home. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say that. How many people have squat racks at home? But if you do, then. This works pretty well. Yeah, I'm I'm going to say hack. That that. is a hack. That's absolutely wicked. That's a hack. Nice, okay, uh, thank you, by the way, that was sent in by 54B9BH6497. I hope that's not your password <laughs> that you've accidentally uh, typed in there. Uh, right, next up we've got this one from Andy Crank, uh, saying, not a tricycle, which needs some explanation, because when you look at it, uh, it does look it's like a, a bike with a another wheel bolted on, okay, to the derailleur hanger. The context is, uh, according to Andy, an off-leash dog ran in front of me and I crashed. I only had minor scratches, but my derailleur hanger was bent. I don't have an alignment tool, which is what you use to straighten bent derailleur hangers, but I had an old bolt-on 26-inch front wheel that threads right into the hanger. So there you go. Uh, Using a spare wheel to check for alignment. Probably not quite as accurate as those alignment tools, which are like millimeter perfect. But um, it, it kind does. of gets you close, doesn't it? I thought it was quite impressive, I've got to say. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a bit more bodge, isn't it? Well, no, I'm going to say that's, a, that's yeah. a hack, although you could just go to your local bike shop and get them to do it for you. Mm. I, don't, I bet they wouldn't charge you very much just to thread an alignment tool in. No, but I, I do love the uh, the ingenuity. Yeah. I like that, thinking outside the yeah. box. Yeah, fair play. So yeah, hack for me. Uh, we've got one from Stur- uh, one in from Samuel Gamester. Sterling board chain guard. Seeing the wild in Winchester town centre outside the South Downs social cafe. Oops, it's four bolts on a five arm crank. Love the show. But basically it's a, a bit of chipboard that is um, being screwed on to give a chain guard to the chain guard doesn't effectively fall off. Yes, um, it's fairly crudely fashioned, isn't it? I think we could say. Uh, the I wouldn't fact say that it makes the bike not, look that cool. No, and it's not round either. It's like someone's cut it with, um, with a, a junior hacksaw. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but you know, it's functional. It is functional. Probably keeps your trousers clean. Oh, I bet you might get splinters though if you're wearing shorts. Well, especially that chipboard. Yeah. Oh, crabs. We're going to say bodge then. That is a bodge. Wouldn't that want an bodge. ankle splinter. And no, with my no, ankles, no. pretty much guaranteed oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be guaranteed. rubbing. Guaranteed. Oh, mate, you, yeah. that'd be horrendous for you. Right. Sorry. That, well, actually, no, Samuel, you've sent it in. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. Whoever created that uh, DIY disaster, yeah, a few um, bits. that's a bodge. Go sort it out. Use better words. Make sure it's slightly rounder. And I'm not go. sure wood has a place on bikes. <laughs> like in some situations, perhaps. It's a functional material. It's a very functional material, and having ridden a wooden bike, Better I can say plastic. it was really nice, but I'm like, I don't know, it's just a bit like, it's wood, bikes should be like metal, and you know, yeah, but for a chain carbon guard. fibre. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> maybe if it was like, Polished walnut or well, something. Right, uh, yeah. But then it's got to be on a bike that suits polished yeah. walnut, whereas that looks. No, you got like... a fair point, mate. You got a fair point. We'll leave yeah. it at that. Let us know in the conversation below what you think. Yeah, would you put polished walnuts on your bike? Um, so, yeah. It's very expensive, polished walnut. Yeah, well, I bet you've been sorting your house out with polished walnut. Uh, well, yeah. I, no, <laughs> I read a book and there's a chapter about walnuts. There you go. Walnut veneer. A little bit interesting. If anyone wants to go to the pub and talk about walnut mm. veneer, I'm your man. There's a deep dive into uh, size library. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, keep uh, keep the hacks and bodges coming in. Um, stop us talking about walnut veneer and keep us on track. Yeah, bicycles. 100%. It's now time. You guessed it. For caption competition. God, that was a quick segue, isn't it? I haven't had time to breathe. I know. I haven't even had time to grab the water bottle. Yet. <laughs> oh sh. There we go. We can bleep that. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the time of the show where we pick a photo, you let us know the caption, and then if it's good enough, we send you a bidon or a bottle. A GCN Camelback water bottle. Yeah, still haven't got over the excitement of receiving these. So excited am I that, so I'm one of these, um, Have you used the VSS, it? yeah, and actually, ah, I'm such a nerd, right? I haven't stuck a name sticker on anything for quite some time. I've got a name sticker. Oh, with a flag on. Yep. Have you got like? Yeah. yeah. What does it say? S. Richardson. S. Richardson. With a UK flag. UK. Oh! No one's nicking my Camelback. <laughs> they are bad boys. They boy. are. They are. You know, this is like thermostat, so, uh, thermo flask. Absolutely genius. Yeah. Anyway, you don't get one of those. You get one of these. A podium bottle, yeah. which is equally cool. Um, right then. So last week we'll do results first, shall we? Last week we gave you this image of two Alpecin de Koenig members of staff outside mm. their team car. One of whom was looking like he was doing some kind of stretching. The winner was Mike Outen six zero zero five to the tune of YMCA. Ready, Hank? Yeah. It's fun to ride, ride with, with MVDP. <laughs> MVDP. -E. There you go. Uh, so I like that very much. That's a new jingle, that. Yeah. That is a new jingle. You could actually do MVDP, I think. Oh, anyway. Mate, I'm not even going to try. No. Well, that'll take a bit of practicing. Yeah. But uh, there you go. I like that. Uh, get in touch, Mike, and we will get your GCN Camelback water bottle sent out to yeah. you. Genius. Yeah. So, James, pressure's on, dudes. Yeah. What is the photo for this week? This week, um, in the Giro, we've got a picture of G coming in with Tade all decked out in pink. Look at those shorts. They are cool, yeah. though. Maybe he's, less wine and more. He's just like, got. He's, and I, I just love the way it's just gone pink. Everything. But with purple shorts. Yeah. Which is cool because if he had pink shorts, it would just. It wouldn't be cool. No, I. Man, I, I hear you, and yeah. I and I literally agree with everything you're just saying. Yeah. Um, uh, but I've got a little uh, little caption for you. Got it. Um, uh, this is G being the dad, and he's going. Now, now, Tade, settle down. You've had your fun, and then he's going. Kids these days. I like that. Yeah, kids, I actually kids, kids these days. Did, did you? Yeah, I did. Who did you nick it? What <laughs> uh, one of our film crew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, at I'm least you admitted it. Is it. Good. I mean, technically, Geraint is probably old enough to be Tade's dad. Oh, yeah, it must be cool. Have you noticed they're both wearing overshoes? <laughs> He's going to absolutely hate me if you say that. I mean, I know this is quite a nerdy thing to say, but they are both wearing overshoes. Tade's covering up his DMTs. I don't know what shoes Geraint's using Is that these days, for but... aero or weather, do you reckon? Well, I mean, I think it looks aero, to be honest with yeah. you. Oh, my word. What is the world coming to? First downhill is wearing skin suits. 
I mean, I know Aero. Have you also noticed new, they're all wearing Aero lids? Yeah. It's a brave new world, mate. It's a brave new world, buddy. And, and look how, yeah, anyway, we could go on for hours. Let us know your caption, and I bet you it's better than mine. Yeah. Stick it in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week. Before we get on with what is coming up on GCN over the next week, it's that customary dive back into our favourite comments that you've been leaving under the previous week's video. Some absolute bangs as always, starting under the show last yeah. week. Um, we were talking about efficiency, Dan and I. Um, Jim Porter said, when you're as out of shape as I am, you start thinking about efficiency just walking to your bike. So I thought that was quite good, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe some roller skates. They're quite efficient. They are. I haven't been on roller skates <laughs> since I was about 10. No, skateboard? Done skateboard. I just wasn't very good though. We're not. I thought I was going to be quite good, but actually Connor's better, which seems weird. That is really weird. Yeah. yeah. No skateboard across the garage to get your bike. Maybe that would uh, save Your a bit of time and a bit of effort. Killer on a skateboard as well. Actually, yeah, very good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Takes after old man. <laughs> uh, right, and then uh, Pit Viper six three twenty said, "Glad I wasn't at the coffee machine when this conversation took place." Uh, yeah. Maybe it was. It was like. Um, a love it or hate it kind of a discussion. But efficiency, that's big. It is big. Super it big, yeah. Big. We had a video over the weekend drop, pro on 100 pound bike versus killer climb, where we had one of our resident pros take on a killer climb on the bike I used to do, to race the train, which was amazing. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But we did have Ramsden, who sent in this, uh, loved it when the pro reminded Hank and Connor who had ridden two Grand Tours, because I, I tend to forget that Connor's ridden Grand Tours. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't, he's very modest, he doesn't like to remind us, but he also doesn't tend to act like he's ridden two Grand Tours either. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, if, if any of you had forgotten yeah, that fact, there you go. Connor wrote yeah. a jury. Actually, there's a really cool um, uh, article on the GCN website that Connor wrote about his experience. Yeah, yeah the which GRA. actually did remind us all. Yeah, there you go then. Yeah. We have one from No Skills Dad that I thought was, um, was Dan Lloyd, but it's not. GCN on every single video. Remember to bring your essentials, tools and spares are fundamental. Also GCN, we don't have any tools, pliers, toothpick, anything. That is true actually. We can often turn up quite unprepared. It's, it's, it's said to have happened. Do as we say, not as we do. Uh, that's because the, uh, that is when I, when I turned up uh, without the, um, the bolt spanner and I had to run into the garden center and get a pair of pliers. <laughs> Disgraceful. Um, right then, we were waiting patiently for uh, the second episode in Dan's journey to health and fitness. Uh, Tarka Chops uh, said on the video that dropped on Saturday, for the vast majority of our cyclists, this is probably GCN's most important series that they have done. Great work, Dan, and I'm looking forward to watching your journey. And Ross the Ninja said, um, at, uh, there's a mediocre plan at 1430 that you can stick to. It's better than a perfect plan that you can't. That is very yeah. true, isn't it? It is. There's no point creating an amazing plan if you can't actually stick to it. No, 100%. 100%. Dan is going full gas at this. And he's doing well it? at it. He's loving it. And it's great to see him back on the uh, on that kind of fitness you know, trajectory. Yep. So, um, but thank you all so much for sending in your comments. Remember to keep supporting the videos. We absolutely love reading through every single comment of yours. So thank you so much. True that. Uh, right, what is coming up on uh, GCN this week? Um, so we've got something from the Tour of Italy on Wednesday. Well, that's tomorrow, isn't it? Mm. Um, so yeah, Alex uh, was out there, as we said, um, and um, he noticed something about bike fit, which is going to be super interesting. Um, on Thursday, top 10 people to follow on Strava. Presumably, Wow Van Art's in there. One would hope so. Blooming love watching Wow Van Art watch. Yeah. Um, on Friday, this is an interesting one, right? So we basically went out and flagged down a load of cycling commuters uh, at a hot spot near us to ask what the one piece of advice they would give other cycling commuters was. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't I know either. There, but I'm fascinated to find out. Yeah. So that's real advice from real riders as yeah. opposed to people like Hank, who's not a real rider because he was a pro. Exactly. And you're not counting. And I'll keep reminding you. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, Connor versus Armageddon breakfast. This is when Connor takes on an insane breakfast and then tries to burn off all the calories. 25,000 of them. Good luck, Connor. Good luck, Connor. Su yeah. Sunday, no pain, what gains? Zone two, challenge part two. This is where Manon is carrying on her zone two challenge. And we've got a lot of love from that series. So well, we find sure. out how fit she's got, don't we? 
make sure you check in, see the results. She's done the test already. I know. I don't. So don't ruin it, Si. Tune in on Sunday. You've got to watch it. <laughs> uh, right. That takes us to the end of the GCN show for this week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as Hank said, we really appreciate your support, be that comments or likes or mm. subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we better get uh, get wrapped up now and go watch the Giro because it's blooming good. Love a Galactico, me. T-shirts. We'll see you next time.